Good morning. Welcome to Green Sky Hill on this beautiful fall October morning. We will be starting a new series called Drawn In, Living Out the Creative Life of God. I was really excited to get into this series, and um, especially because I feel as though I am a creative person. And what I really love about this is helping us to all find our creativity. When you hear the word creative, you may think immediately of um, artsy, uh, maybe music, or um, very talented in, in very obvious ways, and usually an artistic way. But you know, being creative is so much more than that. And we are going to take the next few weeks um, to figure out how we can be creative and how God created us in his creative image. You know, we spend too much time being driven rather than being drawn in. We focus on what we should do rather than what we feel excited and compelled to do in our lives. During this series, we're going to connect with our inherent creativity and nurture this foundational aspect of being human giving us renewed energy for passionate work, delightful play, and creative problem solving to make this world a better place for all. This week, we will be focusing on dreams. began with a dream of God, the will and intention for life to exist in the void. All of our actions are born out of desire, out of a dream and vision for the future. This is our birthright, to imagine and to create. What brings you alive? What truly moves your soul in the deepest way? What you create out of that answer is your greatest gift to the world in the way in which you are a part of God's unfolding and ongoing creative dream. Let us pray together. Creating God, you call forth all that exists in a moment of divine brilliance. Open us again to that spark which you ignited in each of us at our creation, so that we might generate more life-giving energy in this world. Draw us into your story of hope, Give us the courage to dream. Amen. Lord's Prayer. <laughs> Gye aboen mishnan wem bataj shweb zut ninanen. Es aboen matwa egewe meju dog eje. Gege unishish kanke magwat wem dog suning. Nibugam wishnang dash. Unje ama em jai i wish. Kin mag de bandan. Ogama uin. Gekske elzuin. Gepshigan Dagusuan, Gognik upon Agognik. Amen. Please join us in sharing our tithes and offerings. Therefore, we are creators. 
the joy of creativeness should be ours. Sometimes what holds us back is not believing that we are a child of God. Many of us think, oh, I'm not creative. Hear the good news. Know that you are creative simply because you were created by God. As our greeting and passing of the peace in our own homes and with our friends and our families, I want to, you to reach out and to ask yourself as well as others, what is it that you'd like to create? It could be a typical art, artist's creation. It could be a painting, it could be a drawing, it could be writing, it could be something musical, or it could be something like baking or fixing a motor or playing with the kids or decorating for the seasons. What is it that you like to do to create? And for some of us, it's what we do in our work. What do you like to make in this world? Feel free to have some conversations about this in the upcoming week and find out what is it that really makes us feel like we can do, that we can create. At this time, we will share a children's message. Good morning. This morning, we are going to travel far, far away to Australia. Australia is a home to so many strange and wonderful animals. Can you think of some animals that are from Australia? Did anybody think of a koala? Or a kangaroo? Or maybe a wombat? Or an echidna? Well, those examples all are a unique species native to Australia and they all have something in common. They all carry their babies in pouches until they're fully developed. While koalas and kangaroos have permanent pouches, Echidna do not have permanent pouches. Instead, their muscles form a temporary pouch for their offspring to occupy while they're developing. Wombats spend a lot of time digging burrows, and so their pouches are facing backwards so that they don't get dirt in and cover their young in dirt while they're digging into their burrows, into their homes. What would it feel like to be inside of a pouch. I imagine it to kind of feel like when I get cozy and warm in a blanket or when you snuggle down into bed and you have your nest of pillows around your head and your blanket pulled up tight or maybe in a sleeping bag. Have you ever been in one of those sleeping bags where you can cinch it up and it kind of comes right around your face? I feel like that that might be what it feels like. And you know, I think that it's it would feel safe and comfortable. And I feel like with the baby animals, they would feel safe from predators and that they would feel safe close to their mother. Well, you know, God had a really good, um, good reason for creating animals with pouches. These pouches help to keep newborn animals safe and give them easy access to nutrition while they're growing. And it's a creative way to keep babies close to their parents and make sure that they have everything they need to be healthy and cared for. And only God could have dreamed of that. We can see God's dreams come to life all around us in the form of plants and animals that live on earth with us. And humans are God's favorite creation. Long before you were born, God dreamed that one day you would be here. All the amazing things about your life were put in place so that you could have a safe place to grow and to be loved. God gave you a good imagination and a creative mind to dream of all the awesome things that you will do with your life. If you ever feel scared or lonely or lost, remember that God's love surrounds you just like a special pouch and God is always watching over you. We make our belief that God is playing and creating through people in all places and God creates with us too. Thanks be to God. Our scripture reading today comes from Luke chapter 4, verses 13 through 21. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news about him spread throughout the whole countryside. He taught in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. Jesus went to Nazareth, where he had been raised. On the Sabbath, he went to the synagogue as he normally did, 
and stood up to read. The synagogue assistant gave him the scroll from the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to liberate the oppressed, and to proclaim the, this year of the Lord's favor. He rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the synagogue assistant, and sat down. Every eye in the synagogue was fixed on him. He began to explain to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled just as you have heard it. The word of God for the people of God. Today's message is brought to us by Reverend Eric Elms. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus gives us a glimpse of the magnitude of God's playing field when he preaches for the first time in the synagogue in his hometown of Nazareth. At first, the people speak well of him. They marvel that a kid from their own neighborhood is speaking so eloquently in the synagogue. Isn't that Joseph's son, they ask? They're amazed at his words. It's like they can barely restrain themselves from reaching out and just pinching his cheeks in pride. But Jesus doesn't give them the kind of congratulatory sermon that they're looking for. Jesus doesn't assure them that God is on their side and their side only. Instead, he reminds them of an old story from the prophet Elijah, who ministered to the widow in Zarephath, and Elijah's protege, Elisha, who cleansed Naaman, the Syrian, from leprosy. Those stories sound sweet and harmless to us today, but in Jesus' time, they had an edge. Those were examples of God helping foreigners. Jesus notes that even though they were plen there were plenty of starving widows in Israel in Elijah's day, the widow God called Elijah to save was an outsider. God was dreaming bigger than just one nation. God was dreaming for the entire human race. This is why the mood of Jesus' crowd swiftly goes from admiring to adversarial when he reminds them of these stories. Jesus isn't just playing lip service to God's dream for the world. He actually expects them to expand their own vision and then do something about it. So the same people who were cooing over him moments before now haul him out of the synagogue and try to throw him off of a cliff. That's how threatened they felt by Jesus' message of releasing the captives and letting the oppressed go free not just for the people of Israel, but for everyone. God's dream is so large. How can God expect any of us to take on all of the issues Jesus lays out in Nazareth? Solving poverty, releasing the captives, healing the sick, freeing the oppressed. It's so much to take in. The way we live God's dream is not to take on every single issue that God considers important. Rather, we get deeply in touch with what stirs our soul, then devote our life energies to doing that soul-stirring work. We can be part of the answer. We can be part of the dream without having to take it all on. While the human soul pays attention to things like paychecks, it needs and desires far more significant things than money. Once the soul is assured of basic survival of the physical body that hosts it, it quickly turns to other matters. The need to give and receive love, grace and forgiveness. The need to belong in community with others. The need to serve a cause that transcends mere physical survival. If these needs happen to be met through our vocation, through our work, we can work incredibly hard and never feel like we've even been working at all. We may lie awake at night dreaming about ways to do our work better for no other reason than that such dreams give us pleasure. Yet if the soul's needs are not being met, then we can work a tenth as hard, and the only thing we'll dream about with respect to our work 
is how to do less of it. We need to find a way to work toward that soul-stirring work, those dreams that make us feel whole. We can create our dreams into existence, just as God creates our future from his dreams. The sky may be our limit, but there is no limit with God. Let us pray. Oh God, fill our hearts to reach out and welcome. Make us to see your vision once more. Let's dream of a world where our hands are your hands. We offer yourselves, O oh God. Make it so. We pray for the day. Make it so. We dream of a world where love reigns among us and your will is done. O oh God, make it so. Amen. There is a Vitality by Martha Graham. There is a vitality, a life force, an energy, a quickening that is translated through you into action. And because there is only one of you in all of time, this expression is unique. And if you block it, the world will not have it. It is not your business to determine how good it is, nor how valuable nor how it compares with other expressions. It is your business to keep it yours clearly and directly, to keep the channel open. Whether you choose to take an art class, keep a journal, record your dreams, dance your story, or live each day from your own creative source, above all else, keep the channel open. May you see the unfolding of each day as an opportunity to co-create with God. As a Jesus follower, may you feel his company leading you toward creating more kindness, justice, and mercy. May you know the nudge of the creative spirit within, making belief in all you are and do.